Hello, parishioners of OLPH. Welcome to the Immaculate Conception Novena with Good St. Joseph, our final endeavor for the year of St. Joseph. I am Jennifer Farber. And I'm Tricia McLeod. We are the program coordinators for the year of St. Joseph at OLPH and leaders of the Hearts of Fire ministry. Jen, I have to say, it's been an incredible year with St. Joseph. We really needed a spiritual journey with a great saint during the pandemic. I agree, Tricia. I am so grateful to Pope Francis for announcing this jubilee. St. Joseph has truly become a spiritual father to so many in our parish over these past 12 months. Some people in older generations and certain ethnic backgrounds grew up with St. Joseph in their daily lives, but many of us younger folks did not have a relationship with him. Now, with this jubilee, everything has changed. I'm confident he will remain an important part of my prayer life. And I feel the same way. It's significant that Pope Francis announced this special year on the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception in 2020. Who is the one person who knows all of Joseph's virtues, joys, and concerns? Mary, his wife, of course. So it's only natural that our spiritual mother is the one who led us to understand and accept our spiritual father with love, respect, and admiration. I am forever grateful. Tricia, that is exactly why there is no better way to close out the year of St. Joseph at OLPH than with a very special double novena that combines nine days of intercessory prayer to the Blessed Virgin Mary leading up to the Immaculate Conception Novena Solemnity on December 8th with nine days of scripture, meditation, and prayer about good St. Joseph. It's like a two for one. Double the power and double the grace. Well put, Tricia. Friends, here's an overview of our program for the next nine days, followed by our day one prayers. The reason to have a devotion to St. Joseph is simple. No one was closer to Jesus than Mary. St. Joseph occupies a singular place among the saints. He was the spouse of the Blessed Mother, and he exercised fatherhood over the Incarnate Word. By drawing near to him, we draw near to the heart of our salvation, Jesus Christ. In Patris Corde, the apostolic letter which began the year of St. Joseph, Pope Francis writes that each of us can discover in Joseph an intercessor, a support, and a guide in times of trouble. Looking to the saints, we find ready testimony to the power of St. Joseph's patronage. St. Teresa of Avila says of St. Joseph, I do not remember even now that I have ever asked anything of him which he has failed to grant. Many saints are noteworthy as patrons for particular sorts of people and situations, but St. Joseph's patronage is universal. St. Teresa gave a marvelous reason for this. The Lord wished to teach us that, just as he was subject to Joseph on earth, for being his guardian and being called his father, Joseph could command him. So in heaven, Jesus still does all he asks. Sanctity lies in the loving acceptance of God's will, however our life unfolds. Joseph's path to sanctity lay in serving Jesus and Mary within the Holy Family. This path led him through times of persecution and exile, and years of simple labor in Nazareth, all the while in silence and trust. His power is immense. We need him. Jesus and Mary trusted him. Do we? The very act of praying this novena is a personal request to God to help you to trust St. Joseph like Jesus and Mary did. Since this is a double novena, we will offer both intercessory prayer to Our Lady and a guide for devotion to St. Joseph. The prayer to Our Lady is the same every day. From PrayMoreNovenas.com's annual Immaculate Conception Novena. As you become familiar with its cadence and rhythm, Contemplate your love for Jesus' mother and open your heart so she can receive your intentions and present them to her son. Then each day we will use the Magnificat's Nine Days to Joseph spiritual companion composed by the fathers of the Dominican province of St. Joseph. It focuses on a particular aspect of St. Joseph's person each day. We will contemplate him as a husband, as a father, as one persecuted, as a man of trust, of purity, work, and silence, as one who died a holy death, and as the universal patron of the Church. Each St. Joseph entry follows the same structure, a reading from Scripture, a meditation from a particular saint or spiritual writer 
followed by a set of intercessions. We encourage you to entrust to St. Joseph a special intention during these days of prayer. Then we will pray the Lord's Prayer and a closing prayer. Finally, each day concludes with Pope Francis's prayer to St. Joseph from Patris Corde. This double novena is offered with joy and gratitude from the OLPH Hearts of Fire leaders, Tricia and myself, along with Laura Carney, Monica Cassidy, Mary Maginot, and Vivi Lato. It is our hope that these days of prayer bring us all closer to the one who loved Jesus with a Father's heart. May all of us experience more deeply the loving care of Our Lady and the patronage of St. Joseph, whom the Lord set over his own family. Let's begin. Today is day one. We will contemplate our good St. Joseph as a husband. But first, let's begin with our daily Immaculate Conception intercessory prayer to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Are you ready, Tricia? I am. Okay, let's get started. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O most, most pure Virgin, Virgin Mary, conceived, conceived without, without sin, from, from the, the very first instant you were entirely, entirely immaculate. O glorious Mary, full of grace, you are the mother of my God, the queen of angels and of men. I humbly venerate you as the chosen mother of my Savior, Jesus Christ. The Prince of Peace and the Lord of Lords chose you for the singular grace and honor of being his beloved mother. By the power of his cross, he preserved you from all sin. Therefore, by his power and love, I have hope and bold confidence in your prayers for my holiness and salvation. I pray that your prayers will bring me to imitate your holiness and submission to Jesus and the divine will. Queen of heaven, I beg you to beg my Savior to grant me these requests. My Holy Mother, I know that you are obedient to the will of God. In making this petition, I know that God's will is more perfect than mine. So grant that I may receive God's grace with humility as you did. As my final request, I ask that you pray for me to increase in faith in our risen Lord. I ask that you pray for me to increase in hope in our risen Lord. I ask that you pray for me to increase in love for the risen Jesus. Together, let's pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold St. Joseph, the faithful and prudent servant whom the Lord set over his own family. Consider the sublime perfection of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. Consider then the sublime dignity of the one called to be her husband. The spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary would have been filled with all the graces necessary to fulfill such a lofty vocation. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Husbands, love your wives. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. A Meditation on St. Joseph from St. Claude de la Colombiere. Even if the Holy Gospels have only quoted two words about St. Joseph, Vera Marie, meaning that he was the husband of Mary, this is sufficient to give us the most laudable idea of his saintliness. It is enough to inspire the eloquence of the Christian orators. I have to say that these two words seem to me to unfold such a world of meaning that I find myself overwhelmed both by the number and by the grandeur of the things which they imply. If I could adequately express all that I mean by this, I have no doubt that I would render due honor to this incomparable spouse. But because I know that I cannot possibly fully satisfy you, what else can I do but turn to the Blessed Virgin? I know that she would want us to honor this saint so dear to her through the most sacred bonds. I hope that she will obtain insights for you to make up for the inadequacy of my words and thoughts. 
Even if there were no other reason to praise St. Joseph, we should do so in order to please Mary. There is no doubt that she strongly supports every effort to revere this saint. She herself would be honored by this. Besides the fact that he was her true husband, and she always felt for him all that a virtuous wife should feel for the man to whom the Lord had bound her so closely, what gratitude must she not have felt towards him for the way he exercised his authority and for the way he respected her virginal purity? Her gratitude was equal to the love which she herself had for this virtue, and therefore nothing could be more lively than her zeal for the honor of St. Joseph. With St. Joseph we call out to the Lord, Bridegroom of the Church, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you chose to experience family life with Mary and Joseph. Make each of our families a holy family. Bridegroom of the Church, hear our prayer. You performed your first miracle at the wedding feast of Cana. Now show your glory, so that many may believe in you. Bridegroom of the Church, hear our prayer. Comfort those mourning the death of their spouse, and welcome all the dead into your everlasting wedding feast. Bridegroom of the Church, hear our prayer. Please state your personal intentions in the silence of your heart. Together let's pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, you united Mary and Joseph in the bond of holy matrimony, a bond that endures until death. Grant through their heavenly intercession that we may pass through life's trials and enter joyfully into the wedding feast of the Lamb. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pope Francis's Prayer to St. Joseph. Together, let's pray. Hail, Hail Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son. In you Mary placed her trust. With, With you Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tricia, for praying with me today. Oh, you're welcome. I'm happy to. Everyone, take some time today to ponder St. Jo Joseph as husband to Our Lady. Ask them to reveal the challenges and strengths of their marriage and to possibly help you in your personal relationships. Give thanks to God that both had the faith to say yes to his call. We will see you all tomorrow for day two as we explore St. Joseph as an earthly father to the child Jesus, who is also his Savior and King. All prayers are courtesy of PrayMoreNovenas.com and the Magnificat's Nine Days to Joseph Spiritual Companion. St. Joseph, pray for us.